What's up everyone? This is Ben from Wad Prep and I am here with Dr. CJ De Palma, uh, the owner of The Movement Doctor Online. And then we have Coach Jesse Sheriff. He owns uh, the Sheriff Academy. So today we are going to talk about how to get better at your engine. So if you are looking to build your engine for the sport of CrossFit, this is gonna be a video to help you out. But really quick, if you need help getting more efficient at movements, make sure you go to wadprep.com. We have a lot of free skill training programs and progressions. Go download your free training guide. When you are grinding through a really tough workout, it is going to be hard. It is going to suck. Half the battle is being able to embrace the suck, push through the pain, and keep moving efficiently and effectively. If you win the mental side, if you are willing to talk positively about yourself, I'm sorry, I'm boring you, CJ. Sorry. If you're willing to talk positively about yourself, if you're willing to win the mental battle and say, no, I don't care what my body's saying, I'm gonna push through this, then chances are you might see an uptick in your engine. But let's move past the mental battle. Assuming you have the mental strength to push through really challenging workouts, let's move past that and talk about actually programming to truly improve your engine. A big misconception that we have is, again, is the engine is aerobic capacity. Well, most people can, you know, if they have pull-ups and handstand push-ups in a workout and they start to fatigue out, it's not their lungs that are giving up. It's their, just their ability to do the movements efficiently. So what we do is in a programming standpoint, we want to build the movements, uh, our capacity within each movement individually. It's called monostructural conditioning, meaning we're just going to train one movement at a time. We want to build our capacity with just that movement. So we do that with things like EMOMs or uh work to rest uh, with one movement, you know, 10 at a time, rest a minute, 10 at a time, rest a minute. If you had 10 in a workout, but you struggle to get 10, you're likely not going to hit 10. But in this style of training with the work rest or the EMOMs, we can build our capacity within the one singular movement at one time. And then we start to add in other movements once we get better at them. Those are the things that are going to not only increase your capacity to do the movement, but you can also combine that kind of with what I said, where uh, if, if you don't have the confidence to do two ring muscle ups every minute on the minute and you program, let's say one ring muscle up every minute on the minute, you're going to develop that confidence. You're going to be able to push through mentally when multiple muscle ups show in a workout, right? When they show up and, and you have already proven to yourself in these EMOMs that CJ's talking about, you've already proven that you have the engine and you have the capacity to do it, then it's going to convert over to your traditional CrossFit style workouts. CJ's talking about the monostructural approach working on one movement at a time. And that's gonna work really, really well if we're doing the movements really, really well. Become efficient and efficient in your movement. I think that's gonna kind of come from three different things, depending on what the movement is. One being strength, one being your mobility, and then another being your breathing mm -hmm. in that movement, right? So, for example, thrusters. For strength, let's use thrusters as an example because we all know what they're like, yep. right? So if we have 95 pound thrusters in a workout, but 95 pounds is 90% of our one at max thruster. We're either going to scale that workout, hopefully, or just battle through with small sets. It's not our aerobic capacity that's limiting us. It's our strength. It's our ability to actually press that bar overhead from our front squat, right? Um, so strength one, it may be your mobility in some way, right? Yeah, thoracic mobility, probably most likely in that case. Um, but we need to fix that. And then the breathing piece, if you're holding your breath, you're gonna be all red, dizzy, you're gonna need a break and it's because you weren't breathing through it. So finding a, a pattern of breathing through each movement. Um, so breathing out on the way down and breathing in all the way up when everything's open. Just as an example, you can do that with things like wall balls and kettlebell swings, running, rowing, assault bike, you have to have that, right? So in the EMOMs or in the monostructural pieces, the one thing at a time pieces that CJ's talking about if we have those three elements in mind right our strength our mobility and our breathing as we're doing the movements then that will actually improve our efficiency in the movement right if we just keep hitting it and hitting it and not changing anything and not working on the little things that'll make the biggest difference then you can do you can do it till the cows come home and, and it's not really going to help so we want to increase our effectiveness increase our efficiency and then once we have that um you know, minimum effective movement, then we can go over and we can hit these repeat workouts and see a lot of improvement. So 
That might not have been the answer you were looking for. Um, you might not have ever thought about engine building in that particular way. I am gonna leave with one more question for these guys. What happens if we're purely talking about the air bike or the, the rower or the erg or the wh whatever it is? What if we're just talking about the traditional like quote unquote cardio movements? How would you increase your capacity on something like the rower, assuming you're efficient or the air bike, assuming you're efficient? Uh, one way that I do it is uh, train anaerobically, because anaerobic training, uh, meaning uh, sprints, so 10 second, 20 second sprints, or 10 calories, 20 calorie sprints, with rest, work rest, overlays into anaerobic, relays over into aerobic conditioning, meaning work short and fast. Short and fast will help increase your long aerobic capacity. Um, I think it's always important to set a baseline first, right? So do a 5K row, or do a 10 minute assault bike test for calories so that you have a baseline and then pay attention to your paces, mm. right? Every time you're on that roller, if you're rowing a 205 all the time, if, or if you're rowing a 205 for five kilometers, you, you can go a little bit faster when you get those 2K rows going, right? So maybe when you're doing your repeats or you're doing your sprints, pay attention to that monitor, write down that number every single session and be sure that you're changing it, right? Even if it's just one second faster per 500 meters on the rower every workout, if you can push that, that's gonna make a massive difference long term. Well, I hope that you like this video. Now that you've seen this, hopefully you'll be able to start building that engine in the high skill movements and in those, you know, traditional quote unquote cardio pieces. We are actually starting to do individualized program. It's not for everyone. I assure you it's not cheap and it's not a lazy program. These guys uh, give you a lot of feedback. Send an email to support at wadprep.com and we can see if you're a good fit. We'll hop on a complimentary coaching call and see if what they have to offer is right for you. For most people, it's not going to be. And for those, I recommend going to wadprep.com and you can download one of our free training guides that will help you increase the efficiency that Jesse was talking about in all of these skilled movements. Last but not least, thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you absolutely hate this format and you hate seeing my white thighs on the screen. What are you least efficient at? So like what, which engine item are you trying to build the most? For me, my most, if the thing I need to build the most efficiency on, which one are you looking at? The bike. It's gonna be the, it's gonna be all of those cardio things, running, the bike, the erg, they're just boring and I don't like them. Probably barbell cycling. I'm not very good at it. It's more of that strength thing that we talked about. I love doing barbell workouts with CJ. <laughs> Mine's gymnastics for sure. Yeah, anything on the rings or upside down. There, so there you have it folks. What are you least efficient at? What, what engine are you trying to build? Leave it in the comments below. Peace.